Well, hey folks, and welcome to another little episode of Real Country with Jeff and Melanie. Just got through checking the eggs at the hen and quail house. And slow start today, but we got a few. That's better than nothing. Thought I'd make you a little video today and show you some of our little routine. And now that the springtime's getting here and the weather's getting warm and pretty, uh, it's time to get our gardens going, whether that's vegetable or flower. So part of our little routine trying to pretty the place up here lately is watering the flowers. Now we ain't got no hot weather yet. It's just now getting up in the mid 60s and every now and then in the 70s. But we're gonna try to pretty the place up this year and have a little bit more flowers. And I thought we'd show you some of what we're doing so far and walk you through a little setup of a small herb garden. Miss Melanie had one about a year or so ago, and we had it outside in the front yard, uh, just kind of on the side. Now, we live out in the county, so, you know, it's, it's country. It ain't as deep as I wish we were, but uh, she likes the fact if she gets ready to cook or grill, she can just step out here and pluck her a handful of fresh herbs to use in making spaghetti and pasta and soups. But I uh, thought we'd show you how to make a real simple one. Don't take a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort. One you can put about anywhere, whether you live in town or in the country. And show you the flowers. But uh, let's get going with the flowers here. Let me turn this around where I can see what I'm going to show you. We got us some pretty old ferns. I believe they're what they call the Boston ferns. And uh, they're fairly easy to grow. They ain't hard to keep take care of. Uh, now where our front of our house sits, we get, I'd say during the summertime, probably a good ten, eight to ten hours at least of direct sunlight. So it's kind of brutal on these ferns, but we hang them up under the eave of the house and uh, I try to get out here early in the morning and I take them off. We got them hanging around the front porch. So I take them off where they won't, the water won't run straight through and ruin our wooden front porch. But if you just bring them out here in the morning, just give them a light soaking, just good enough to know that you're keeping them damp and everything. Uh, if you do that about once a day, and then I cheat when it rains. When it rains, I'll set them off the front porch where the you know, the eave of the house that'll run off on them. And uh, that rainwater's better for them than inside the hose pipe. But we got us some little petunias here. Uh, like I said, Melanie, Miss Melanie wanted to put these out. Thought they'd look real pretty in front of the little storage building we got in the front. So I told her I'm fixing to grow all these myself from seed, but she couldn't wait, so we had to go to the store. And like I said, it wasn't a whole lot, just a few dollars. And then over here, I'll show you some of our herbs. Uh, and give them a little light sprinkle. Gonna have a couple of basil, a couple of chives, uh, some rosemary, pine, and uh, a little bit of mint. I love the old mint. Nothing else, just come by and brush up against it. And uh, man, it smells good. We can make some mint tea with that. Put some chives on some baked potatoes and put that basil in your, uh, in your spaghetti sauce. And we got a little lavender over there and it, it actually does a little bit better in bad soil. Don't wanna, don't wanna wet it too much. It kinda does good hunting for its stuff instead of just being overloaded. But that's basically how to look pretty in a little bit. We'll hang them around the house. And they'll look sharp. But thought I'd walk you over here and show you what our little setup is for our herb garden. Uh, basically, it's so hot down here in Alabama. Uh-oh, now you get to see my ugly shadow. Let me get out of the way. Uh, 
we buy a little small kiddie pool for our dogs to cool off in in the summer because our temperatures average 90s, 100s, and uh, it's just feels like a thousand percent humidity. You can't walk to your mailbox without getting sweaty. But we keep a little small kiddie pool filled up for the dogs just to come and waller in and cool off. And this pool is about two years old. So what I did was I took the pool, drilled some holes in the bottom of it for drainage, and then went and got us a, a bag of a little pea gravel and just spread that out. And then I'm going to put our little growing medium. It's kind of homemade. I'm not satisfied with uh, store-bought potting soil. Uh, when I was a kid, there was true potting soil. Now, most of it's mulch. And I'm just not happy with it, so I kind of cheat. Uh, I take some show enough dirt. Oh yeah, let me walk you over here and show you some show enough dirt. I've heard the expression, people were dirt poor. Well, buddy, you need to start farming dirt. Because I went and got a back end of my little pickup truck load of topsoil. I don't know if you can see it real good for the shadows. Let me turn around. But it, I have a short bed Ford F-150. And that little pile right there, minus about a third of a wheelbarrow full, that was about $65 plus tax. So I'm going to laugh at somebody next time they say somebody's dirt poor because you got dirt. You about to be a millionaire. You got enough of it. You can sell it to somebody like me. But I take my dirt, took my little wheelbarrow, and I put about a third of that in here. And then I took some old sphagnum peat moss. You buy it in the big old bundles at the store. And that helps hold the moisture and everything. I put about a third of that in there. And then I went and got me some black cow cow manure. Uh, I have bought other brands, but like I said, it's more compost. This black cow, uh, it does good. I, I see a real good difference when I'm planting, and I always try to add this even when I'm starting my little pots, you know. But I mix a bag of that and about a five gallon bucket, give or take, of the uh, peat moss, and then, like I said, about a third. It turns into thirds. So, you have to excuse my dogs, they're gonna bark a little bit. But uh, mix it all together in the wheelbarrow. And then you come over here and you just dump it out. Let's see if I can get a good. I ain't gonna be able to do that. I'm gonna have to lay this down. Let me sit this down and we'll see what we can see here. How's this gonna work? Y'all bear with me. Uh, it's pretty old good. There we go. Alrighty, let me shovel this out real quick. Just fill it up close to the brim. And then just kind of spread it around, level it out. No right or wrong. 
try not to overflow it. But just get you enough in there. All right, let me get some plants here. China shop. But anyway, <laughs> squat. Hush. I have to excuse my old boy. He barks every time somebody pulls up around the neighborhood. But these are some Bonnie Plant Farm herbs. Like I said, they were just a quick start. And this is the onion chives. And you just pick them how you want them to grow. Set them down. Pack them in lightly. And we like to mix them up, don't put everything at one spot. Here's some rosemary. And the same thing, just gently bring them out. And if you see the roots are kind of balled up, I like to just pop them out a little bit. That'll help them roots take off and grow good. Just skip them about a foot away. We always keep plenty of this soil around so as we water down rain we can come back top it off top dress it here's some sweet basil and then just gently pull them roots a little bit and like I said there's no right or wrong and I don't want to put them all right side by side, so we'll skip over. Just take your tags. And then pull over here. I said we're only going to put about six plants in this bed. Trust me, as they take off and grow, it'll be more than a plant. These plants will grow unless we have some bad weather, extreme heat, and they'll be putting out and making, hopefully up to the fall. And like I said, right now, this is pretty much full of sun, but our trees are about a week away from putting out all their leaves for the summer. And once that happens, it'll be partial sun, partial shade. Oh, we have a, a long, hot day here in Bama. Oh. And that's really all there is to it, folks, if I don't fall over a tree root. <laughs> but like I said, we got two rosemary, two chives, and two basil. And I'm making more shadow than I am sun. But that's really all there is to it. And like I said, that soil's fairly damp, so I'm not going to water it right this minute. I had just watered the plants. But you see, all the time to mix it, to pack it, to plant it. Might have taken my time 35 minutes to an hour. And hopefully toward the end of the season, we'll enjoy a lot of this fresh herbs in our food. But I better get back over here and hang up these baskets where they can start drip drying in the sun. And hopefully, before the evening's over, my hens will give me at least two or three more eggs. And the quail maybe give me three or four as well. But folks, it's just a little quick video, nothing fancy. But it just goes to show, you don't have to have a full, big-time commercial garden. Uh, even if you live in a subdivision, I don't think no covenant in a subdivision 
would object is you put in a little small kiddie pool near your back door or your front door. Well, I wouldn't put it in the front door in the subdivision, <laughs> but ain't nothing wrong with it if you want to. But if you've got a flower bed, you can put this out. And all you need to do is come out here about once a day. I like to do it first couple hours of daylight. That way it has time to soak in before the sun comes out and burns it up in the summertime. But uh, hope you liked the video. If you do, please hit the like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, we've got a lot more videos coming out. Uh, we're uh, getting some more livestock. Uh, it's about time to get some more chicks trying to expand the herd and uh, going to be doing a lot more planting. So stick with us. we got a lot more to come and fixing to start taking a few little road trips and hopefully we're just going to get busier and do more work and have more fun as the spring and summer rolls around. But till the next time we see y'all, uh, good Lord's willing, the creek don't rise. We hope we can catch y'all down the road in just a little bit. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.